I think we can all agree that Sonic as a character is a very weird franchise. Some of his games have been truly fantastic, actual classic games that have established the history that's been built upon it, or even games like Sonic Adventure 2, newer stuff like Sonic Mania. There have been a lot of very good Sonic games, but there's also been a ton of dumpster fires, completely broken games that feel barely playable. So going into Frontiers, I was hesitantly excited. A lot of the trailers, a lot of the gameplay left me feeling a bit mixed, but now that I've had a chance to actually play the game myself, it's surprisingly good. This is something that's blisteringly fast, it has a lot of charm and love in it, and more than anything else, it has a good sense of variety for such a big game. But there are definitely some pretty bad problems we need to discuss. What's up gamers, Dreamcast Guy here. Hi, hope you're having a great day. If you could like this video and subscribe if you haven't already. Now, we're going to be trying to divide this entire video up into three separate chunks because the gameplay of this is broken down into three separate chunks. There's the open world segments where you mostly do a bunch of puzzle solving. There's the anime style boss fights, which we're going to be very careful with because obviously I don't want to spoil anything. And finally, we're going to talk about cyberspace, which is sort of like the retro style Sonic levels. And personally, it's my favorite part of the game. Let's begin by talking about that open world gameplay because this has got to be the oddest concept they've managed to cram into Frontiers. So the way this works is that there are a bunch of separate islands. Now on each island, there's a different hero you're trying to save, whether it is Knuckles or Amy or Tails or whoever like that. Now the way this exists is instead of just being held captive, they're kind of stuck in between realities. They kind of look all staticky and digitized. So in in order to bring them fully into this world, what you have to do is essentially hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of random tiny puzzles. As you're exploring the environment all the time, there's going to be loop-de-loops, jumping problems, all sorts of hidden stuff you can unlock by doing little wave dashes and stuff. And when you do this, you're going to find little pieces of heart. Now, these can be very wide ranging. And I have to say, this is kind of the part of the game that I feel like engaged me the most is the fact that these puzzles just completely are so wide in scope because there is so many hundreds of them they're kind of back to back i can show you so many clips that are like one minute long where i'm getting three of these in a row where i did a loop to loop and then i found a hidden random ramp and then i'm sliding under something and fighting some monsters but this also brings me to what is easily the biggest problem inside of sonic frontiers which is the technical issues. Now, typically in my reviews, I like to try and talk about the negatives towards the end of the video because I do think positivity is more important when it comes to these big intricate video games. But there are some very glaring glitches from a technical aspect that need to be discussed. The most glaring problem has got to be this pop-in, because since you are just going so incredibly fast, especially during these open world segments, a lot of times the environment just, just appears in front of you, like straight up platforms and stuff. And really, when you're doing these big jumping puzzles, it kind of gets incredibly difficult because you are a lot of times dashing or even super jumping off platforms and stuff, and you really can't see where you're landing. Like, you are just blind leaping into the abyss and hoping that some sort of platform appears. The pop-in in this game is very, very, very bad. Now, I'm not going to say it's game-breaking because obviously... I, I, I beat the game, so clearly it's not game-breaking, but it just makes it where a lot of these times you kind of just have to assume that stuff is going to work out. A lot of times if there's a couple rings going off into space, you kind of just have to speed dash that direction and hope it works out. It really does suck when you speed dash off a platform and there's nothing to catch you because there's just blind, constant pop-in. And this exists with grass and enemies as well. But let me briefly talk about 
about combat because this is probably the part of this that feels the most strange, but not necessarily negative, but it's very weird. So Sonic is able to lock onto enemies and just punch the heck out of them. Now at the start, you have just a couple different hits. As you unlock the skill tree, you start to get more complicated combos that allow you to springboard off somebody and then wave dash downward or do laser combos where you're shooting bullets out of your blue nipples. A lot of this stuff looks kind of funny, but it definitely works. Like all the combat is as strange as it is. It's very, very functional. I found it to be pretty easy to just sort of figure out an enemy's weakness, what kind of attack manages to crush them and then dominate the heck out of them. And that's nice because you can also level up. Just the idea of trying to level Sonic up is such an odd concept. But let's briefly talk about the bosses. Now, this game is very, very heavily focused on, well, presentation of trying to be a big, flashy experience. Something that's not just going to be fun to figure out and dash around and destroy stuff, but also very fun to look at. A lot of the bosses feel almost like interactive cutscenes, especially the major plot relevant ones as you finish off each of the islands. I can't show you because it is a spoiler, but there's big mega anime boss battles. And when you're doing those, they're very scripted. Typically, the enemies have a specific weakness or a specific attack combo or a specific direction you need to try and go and hit. And I, I don't even mean that as like a detriment. I'm just saying that the game cares about being almost an anime. It's cool to see like him powering up and blasting people and dodging missiles and flipping underneath huge mechas and stuff like that. There's a bunch of mini bosses as well, and each of them plays completely different. There's this weird guy called Sumo, where you have to like bounce off turnbuckles to electrocute him. There's big, huge guys where you have to try and run on rings and climb up to hit them. There's little dudes that have to be just demolished by running a ring around them. I don't know. It's interesting to me that the game just keeps changing form and function. When you're exploring the open world and trying to save your different hero friends and doing the literally hundreds and hundreds of random puzzles you're going to find upon, it's cool that there is just the options of, all right, I want to do this puzzle. I want to go fishing to try and just catch these heart tokens. I want to just explore and unlock more parts of the map by doing optional puzzles that give me more areas of the zone just clear on the map. I like the fact that there is a lot of choice into how you want to play this. I mean, Sonic Frontiers gives you a lot of options. Unfortunately, because they are trying to make this a flashy, cool experience visually, it makes it where the camera can be incredibly glitchy at times. It can just straight up go the opposite direction of where you're running. It can change in the middle of a jump and send you flying off the edge. I had times where I found like walls that were literally unclimbable because the camera keeps changing. So it means you fall off automatically. I mean, stuff like this is just, it's annoying and it's weird. But let me talk about the best part of the game, which is cyberspace. This is basically classic Sonic. Each of these is a different level. Some of them are like remakes of levels that have existed in other games, but I don't even care about that. I think the cyberspace levels are brilliant. They're so well crafted, they have cool goals, so you need to try and finish it with like 80 rings or under one minute or trying to just basically keep yourself alive and hit the finish line or find all these little hidden relics. I think these levels are incredibly fun. I mean, some of them can be a little bit frustrating as you try and figure out, you know, some of the camera glitches and stuff, but once you kind of master that flow and get things going, it's weird how well they play. I mean, a lot of Sonic Frontiers to me, feels like Sonic Adventure 3. I always loved Sonic Adventure, and a lot of Sonic Adventure felt like going from location to location, going into the specific dungeon and getting the next like emerald or getting the next unlock or getting the next power-up. Frontiers feels like that. I'm going around, I'm saving my friends, I'm doing the little random puzzles, and then after that, of course, I'm going into cyberspace in order to unlock more keys, get more emeralds, do the next big boss fight. In a lot of ways, this does kind of remind me of some of my favorite Nintendo Switch games. It does kind of have vibes like Mario Odyssey and trying to collect moons in order to progress, and how you do that is completely up to you. The choose-your-own-adventure styling of this, though, does work. I mean, I'm sitting here genuinely impressed 
that Sonic Frontiers is as good as it is. I'm glad I played it. I'm glad they delayed this and polished it as much as they did. Does it probably need a couple patches? Yeah, but I can't hate it. Sonic Frontiers gets the thumbs up. Okay, so we've heard some good and some bad, but let's go over to the ratings board and put a big number on it. I am giving Sonic Frontiers an 8 out of 10. Thank you so much for watching gamers. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a big old thumbs up, share with your friends and subscribe if you haven't already. And please keep dreaming. I think I'm very slightly whispering. Both of my roommates are asleep and they have work in the morning and I don't want to be a jerk. I've got two roommates, both of them good dudes. Thanks to y'all. Sorry if I woke y'all up. I'm so sorry. If you want to play Sonic, just let me know. Can play the PS5. Much love. <laughs> Thanks so much for watching that video. If you want to see something else, you can always click this link to see what I put up last or, you know, subscribe and see what's coming up next. Also, I promise that whatever I do, it'll try not to suck.